Welcome to this introduction tutorial for ProBlades, ProVideoBackgrounds.com, your professional choice for replacing a chroma key or a green screen in a shot with actual video background plates to make your chroma key shots really stand out or, or not stand out. The key is to uh, make the composites look seamless, like the person's really in that location even though they're shot on a green screen. If we're successful, um, the composite is completely transparent and you can't tell that the shot's been sourced um, through a green screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it all happens. Oh, we want to start with a foreground shot on green screen. I'm just going to open up a comp that I just created and it's going to be our medium shot. And as you can see, it's just going to be a basic 1080p project. So bring that up and the foreground plate we're working with is this one I shot. Here, it's, it's going to be a medium shot, and you'll see I have some specs on it here. It was shot with a 35 millimeter lens. It's a medium shot, chest up. It might be a little tighter than your average medium. By the way, this is Lara. You might recognize her from the ProVideoBackgrounds.com website. You might also recognize her from her very popular Instagram account, where we see we have a there's some dogs there and some uh, some food pics and um, yeah, those are shoes. Anyway, moving on. First things first, we want to match our background to the foreground as best we can. And, and there's some wiggle room, but getting it close is going to be really important for getting a, a great looking, uh, believable composite. So we've got, we, we know we have a medium shot. Uh, it's 35 millimeters. The lighting's generally pretty flat. It's not really harsh or directional. So we're going to go ahead and go to the ProVideoBackgrounds.com website uh, for some video backgrounds to match to this foreground. So here we go. Here's the site. And we've got some, some popular backgrounds and some information about the matching system if you scroll down and even some in-depth notes. But right now, we're just looking for a plate to match what we have. So let's go to the store here. And I, I know we're looking for a 35 millimeter shot that's kind of a medium wide. So we're obviously not looking for a really compressed background like you might see with this one or, or with this one. This one looks about right. We kind of have the view of a, a whole room compared to its sister plate. We'll go ahead and click on this here. It's Claremont Office, which is a pretty popular plate. And look down into the product specs here and we can see it is 35 millimeters. It's also a medium shot, 30 frames a second. So this is matching about what we're seeing in our foreground plate. And it's an interior office location. We can click on that and see it looks pretty flatly lit, which should uh, match our flatly lit example. We can see a video preview of it and we can even download an MP4 comp right here to drop into our After Effects before we purchase to see how the comp is going to look. So um, if we wanted to go with this one, we would just check out, click on pay, fill out the credit card information and you're good to go. Um, before you know it, you'll have a download link and you would be downloading your background. So we're not going to use Claremont today that's up there for purchase. I'm going to use something that we don't have on the site yet. We're going to put her in a warehouse scene. So I've got some background plates here that I'm going to use the, the 35 millimeter one right here so that, uh, so that it matches our lens and composition. First things first, we'll go about getting a, a pretty basic, simple key going. Now there's some more advanced ways we can go about keying in the future for more complicated or difficult composites but we're just going with a simple single pass key light key right now. Okay, so we've got it. We can see right away the composition matches pretty well. I mean, obviously these were shot to be used in this way, so I would hope it matches. We're going to go to the status view and we're going to clean up this key just a little bit. It's getting close to where we need it to be now. There are some advanced techniques to make this key cleaner, to retain more edge detail, but um, 
I think for this example, it's looking good. We look at the edges here, and we're going to go ahead and apply the screen pre blur, clean up some of these jaggies, and then I'm going to shrink it back just a little bit. We're looking at the intermediate result, looks pretty clean. We've got some green spill, but once we go to the final result, it gets cleaned up pretty well. One thing I'd like to go and do is to use the hard color replacement. It gives you a little bit less noise in some applications. So there we go, we're looking pretty good. The key is not looking bad at all. We're going to move her over just a smidge. There we go, for our composition's sake, and okay. We've got a decent looking key. The compositions are matching in the foreground and the background plates. The lighting is matching. But what I'm seeing though is that the color levels in the foreground image and the background image are a little bit off. And we really want to match all these things to get a really believable composite. First, I want to touch up the background image. The background is looking a little low contrast. And the first thing I'm going to want to do for this is I'm going to apply a levels correction. A levels correction shows me right here, we can see in the blacks, there's a lot of space between true black and the blacks in the image. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. That's going to add some contrast back and that's going to deepen the blacks in our background a little. And that's looking good, I like that. Also, I wanna note that we're working in 16 bit here. When you're working with chroma keying, it's best to give the renderer as much color depth information as we can. Even though the sources are 8-bit, the blending can be expanded to that 16-bit palette and, and that's gonna be nice for us. So now we're going to go and take a look at the foreground here. It's a little bit flat looking. We could add some contrast, so we'll do some basic color correction. So we'll go ahead and add an adjustment layer and effects. Let's see, we'll add a curves adjustment and we'll add an exposure correction. And I'll actually put that exposure first and I'm going to pump it up maybe a quarter stop just to brighten up her face a little bit. And I'm, and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here to keep the blacks nice and dark and just a little bit of boost in the upper mids to kind of bring her face out a little bit more. Do we need more exposure on the face? Maybe 0.35, maybe 0.35. That's looking, uh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so it's looking nice, but, but we brought the background exposure up unintentionally when we brought up the foreground exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose the adjustment layer with the foreground layer to separate the foreground effects from the background. We're going to pre-comp it, and we'll just call it a medium shot color correction pre-comp. So the background layer exposure goes back down to normal, and it's looking pretty good. I think it's looking good in general. Maybe, maybe she's a little warmer than the background. The background's got a lot of cool tones, so we go into that pre-comp and find those layers. Find the curve adjustment again, and maybe just add a little bit of blue to cool it down a little, and take a little bit of the reds out. And that's kind of cooled down the skin tones, taking a little bit of the warmth out. She matches better now, I think, with the background. So that's looking good. Another thing I want to point out with these pro plates is the difference between using a still image you may have downloaded from the internet versus uh, using actual video in your composite. If you look, you can see that we actually have some texture here in the, in the background plate. It's actually video, not just a still, and um, the texture is moving. It has some grain or noise. And obviously there's a difference between grain and noise, but you can see the textures in here and in here. So it's, it's not overly clean, which is something that really sells the image, I think, when you get the composite together. Okay, so there we go. That's going to be our, our medium shot. 
The great thing about Pro Plates is that you can get packages that will give you the option to do this medium shot. And if you shot with two cameras and have a medium close up or a close up to punch into, well, oh, we can do that too. So that's our medium shot. Let's look at the medium close up. We have another comp here for the medium close up. So we'll grab the 50 millimeter shot of our talent. Obviously, it's a little tighter, so we want the background to correspond. We have a corresponding background clip. It's the 50 millimeter warehouse. So we'll drop it on. And let's go ahead and apply the key again. We'll grab the green. We'll do this a little faster than the last time. Looking at the status. Okay, it's not perfect, but, um, but close enough. Changing the color replacement method to hard color. And now we're going to look at the intermediate result. So we've got a little bit of green spill. We're going to roll it back or shrink it down rather, just a little bit. Negative one, and then we're going to check out the final result. Now looking at the edges, and the edges look pretty good. Well, she's obviously pretty happy about it too. Okay, so not bad at all. And we've got a pretty decent looking key. We're going to go ahead and apply those. I'm just going to copy the levels correction from the media shot into the medium close up. It looks like we went a little overboard. We don't want to clip it past where the black information is, so. I'll stretch it back out just a tiny bit. You can compare the backgrounds. I think maybe brighten this one up a little bit to match a little better. They're looking pretty decent and we're going to go ahead and apply our foreground color corrections too. I'm going to grab those from our previous comp and go back here. We're going to add that adjustment layer and paste it on. Looks like we got a little bit more than we bargained for though. I think we, we brightened too much. So I'm going to roll back the exposure correction. Maybe point 0.2. I'm going to flip flop between these two. Yeah, that looks better. It looks like we're matching a little closer. Maybe just a smidge, maybe just point 0.1. Medium close up color correction pre comp. There we go. Now that we've got that pre comp going, we can A B between them and see the backgrounds are seeming to match. Foregrounds seem to be looking pretty good. I'd say it's a pretty good key. The composite looks pretty convincing to me. I like it, and obviously if you cut between these two, it looks natural. Some other thoughts for this, we could employ a multi-pass key to improve the details and get the key a little more precise, especially with the edges and um, details in the hair. We could also do a light wrap where we take colors from the background and integrate and wrap them around the edges of the foreground. Here's one example of a simple light wrap and we can see the colors from the background wrapping around the edges. Okay, so that's the basic plate matching chroma key compositing tutorial from Pro Plates. I hope you found it useful and that it helps you out. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment and happy keying. I'm Walter Lowe with Pro Plates at ProVideoBackgrounds.com.